Today on Hands On Photography, we are talking street photography. I am just so and just mm, so pumped up to be able to sit down with Mr. Harry Williams and go through his flow of street photography. And I got to tell you, it's not quite what you think. I mean, you you, mm, it's not just getting out there and pointing and shooting. I, I, I'll tell you that right now. Great stories, great images, and that's coming up next. This is Twit. Listeners of this program get an ad-free version if they're members of Club Twit. $7 a month gives you ad-free versions of all of our shows, plus membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners. And finally, the Twit Plus feed with shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, The Giz Fizz, and more. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. And thanks for your support. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Perot, and this is Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. Hope y'all are doing well. I am unbelievable as always. I love sitting down with you fine folks each and every Thursday to discuss different tips and tricks to help make you a better photographer as well as a better post processor. And also, I like to sit down with a fine professional photographer out here in this world that's just eager to share their tips and tricks and knowledge with all of you hands on photography listeners. Hey, I appreciate y'all joining me. And if this is your first time catching the show, welcome to you. Thank you. Go ahead and subscribe in whatever podcast application you're enjoying this on. We're available on all of them, of course. Some of you already know this, but yeah, go to Apple Podcasts, subscribe right there. Go to Spotify, subscribe there. Go to Google, go to YouTube. We're available on all of those. And if you have the option to do a nice little star rating or comment or likes or whatever all those algorithms do, do that for me as well to help push us up in the uh, search results and help grow the hands-on photography community. Or just feel free to head on over to our website, twit.tv slash hop. That's twit.tv slash H-O-P for hands-on photography. Appreciate y'all doing that and appreciate y'all sharing all of the love for the show. So let's go ahead and get started with this week's episode. Um, Last week, we talked about the moon photography challenge. And and again, I really do appreciate all the feedback that we got from that one. And prior to that, we had a couple of interviews and one of them was interviewing a amazing street photographer, the Canon Explorer of Light, uh, Miss Chris Ann Johnson. Well, this week I'm interviewing another great photographer um, that's not just doing street photography, but boy, so daggum good and just has a really, really interesting take. As a matter of fact, uh, I got the attention of a local um, publication here in the San Francisco and Bay Area, SF Gate. They reached out and did a feature on them, and we're going to talk about that momentarily. But first, allow me to introduce you to Mr. Harry Williams. How you doing, sir? Great. Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> hey, I appreciate you joining me today. Um, again, I, I came across your story on uh, sfgate.com and was like, wow, this is just unbelievable. And a lot of our hands on photography listeners have been quite curious about street photography. And, you know, for the last year and a half, me personally, I've struggled with street photography because here in this particular area of, of uh, Sonoma County, it's been a bit dead out and about people have been just sort of uh, either sheltering in place or the businesses have been shut down. It's just been flat out quiet. And so going out and trying to explore street photography has just been a little bit rough for me. And, and I sort of felt bad about it, but I'm glad I was able to come across folks like you that's been able to get out and travel around the world, whether it's here in the Bay down in San Francisco or heck, even out in Cuba and wherever, where else have you been? You've been all over the place here recently. Yeah, <clears throat> I was fortunate. I was just in uh, Portugal about a month ago and then um, in Mexico uh, three times over the last course of the last probably six months. So oh. uh, I go to Mexico to go surfing, but then I also, um, I've been trying to do a lot more photography um, in, uh, Oaxaca. So I made a trip to Oaxaca a few years oh. ago. I went back and then I'm kind of starting this new body of work, uh, in Mexico, uh, in Oaxaca, 
but that that's more concentrating on on really really getting even more in depth on people's hands and the people that work in the fields people work in the markets and um again with all of my work just trying to get sharper closer tighter and just show you know sometimes when i'm doing that type of work for me it's like i would just want like one little element in the shot to say everything and sometimes i'm like well i got to get tighter or closer if there's a little mark on that person's hand or they're missing a finger and it's one word that says that they're like a shoemaker then you you just kind of derive all these um things from that image like how do they lose their finger was it making shoes you know so mm -hmm. uh, so yeah i've been i've been going down there a lot and i try to work on multiple bodies of work at the same time so it keeps me kind of fluid and just like you said if there if there's times in the city where there's not a lot of people out or i'm not doing a lot of street photography then i can pivot and keep working on something else and just kind of um keep challenging myself uh to look at things different because sometimes you know when i just do street photography um it just kind of becomes redundant and i want to always keep making keep pushing myself as an artist to make stuff look fresh now see this is fascinating because you, you said one key word pivot and just sort of keeping things fresh. That sounds like a, a man that, that knows a bit about branding and marketing. That, is, <laughs> right. is that, is that right? Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, cause I've seen, I've seen some of your profiles online and, and I believe it was Harry Williams marketing. Is that correct? Creative. Harry, Harry Williams creative. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that and what, what, how you got started with that and some of the services offered from you folks? Yeah. My background has always, well, my degree is in photography. So I got a degree from Ohio state, uh, in 1994, 95. Mm -hmm. Um, but what I, what was really interesting is when I was in school, um, they taught us they were really only interested in teaching us how to be artists that my, all of my teachers were already respectable in the art world. They, they one teacher had images in MoMA in New York city. So they weren't wow. really interested in teaching commercial photography. So as an 18, 19 year old kid, you're like, what am I going to do? Like <laughs> when I get out of school? Yeah. 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 But in the reality is what the good and the bad thing is I wasn't really prepared to do commercial photography when I graduated, I was just taught to be an artist. So, um, and, and, in all honesty, I didn't really like it. So I just thought at one point I want to just shoot what I want to shoot and I'll work and get a job in a creative field. But, um, that way I can never have to, I can just shoot what I want to shoot and I don't have to make money on it. You know, I can just kind of keep working. So, um, so that's kind of where that went. And my, my background's always been in um, visual merchandising and design. Uh, I worked for a number of years for William Sonoma Pottery Barn. And then I um, was a creative director for a kid's clothing group. Um, and then I just broke off and did my own thing. And I was kind of doing everything from store design and visual merchandising, photography. I mean, I had a lot of things under my belt so I could kind of take on projects and they would kind of span a lot of different kind of creative areas so that's where h harry um, williams creative kind of came from you know it's great that you mentioned the design aspect of things i've spoken about this before on the show i even had a a um graphic designer on the show mr dave clayton mr dave clayton come on and just talk about some of the principles in design and how those principles can be applied to your photography and really make your photography stand out. Um, have you found yourself, you know, just sort of preaching the gospel of that as well in some of your work? I know you're doing street photography, yeah. but every now and then as you're framing up something, do you sort of have this little checklist going off in your, oh, yeah, in your head? Of course. <laughs> yeah. Well, and um, when I was taught photography and this is like these guys that are from the seventies and they were, they, they were like the original street photography guys Right. They they were really, really big. And this was before digital that um, we were not allowed to crop anything. So whatever oh. we shot in frame, we could not crop. And we'd have to print our stuff in the dark room with the sprocket holes. So you couldn't. So they would look when you would have your critiques, you could see exactly <sighs> what was in your frame. And if you didn't do that, you were, were going to get an F, you know. Wow. So 
for <laughs> years and years and years and years and years, I only shot like that. And it was very critical to me what was in that frame. And most probably 75 or more percent of my shots are not cropped. So that's why I'm always trying to get really close to what I'm doing. My portraits, oh, um, okay. my hands, they're not, I don't shoot with a telephoto lens. I don't, I mean, I'll, there's sometimes I'll, I'll shoot one, but not with portraits or not with, not with people. If it's a scene in the city that I want to capture, maybe the light falling uh, on somebody and it's just capturing shadow or light or form, then maybe I might, but, but almost all, well, all of my portraits are, um, 50 millimeter or or a mac lately i've been shooting with a macro lens but if they're fixed they're not they're not zoom lenses outstanding yeah i was going to ask you so what are you shooting with so it's a 50 millimeter um my understanding with the 50 mil is it's pretty much like your standard human eye focal yeah light. is that that why you went with that or why not yeah. say a 35 or even an 85 just because you it's want the, to get closer uh, it's the distortion and getting closer and then um, also with the 50 that I shoot with, it's a 1.4. So mm. I like Ooh, it. Beautiful in low shallow depth light. of view. <laughs> yeah. And it, that was something that's really, I've only started to do within the last, probably last two years. Because again, when I was bring, brought up in photography, we all had to, we had to shoot everything at like F16 because you wanted every, you, uh, that was the other you're thing. You're feeling a that, frame, right? <laughs> well, you they, my teacher's thought was that why throw something out of focus? If it's not, it's supposed to be out of focus and why is it there? So everything in the frame be conscious of, like you shouldn't throw things out of focus, you know? So, um, wow. Interesting so it took concepts. me a long time to break <laughs> these habits. Yeah. It, was, it took me a long time to break some of these habits. And then recently in the last probably two years, I've been shooting a lot of portraits wide open at 1.4 and letting everything fall out be, except for like the sharpness of the eyes or something. And, uh, I love it. It's, it's, it's like, I'm like, Oh, why did it take me so long to do this? But, <laughs> um, you know, but then it, it's sometimes when I shoot people's hands, it's opposite. Cause I want them to be really, really, really sharp. And so right. I, I kind of go between the two. Um, and then there's sometimes too, where I don't even, the, things on street photography, something will happen so fast that I know I'm like, I just got to set this on auto just so I can make sure to get the shot. And I can't, I don't have time yeah. to like play around with different exposures and stuff. So yeah, it I get falls it. that in makes there. sense. That makes sense. Yeah. I, I don't typically ask this question, but what's the camera that you're using? I use a Nikon, just a Nikon uh, D750. And then, like I said, the stand, I just carry a, Usually when I go and walk, well, not usually, always when I go and walk, I just mm -hmm. carry a 50 millimeter lens on camera. That's it. That's I don't carry any, of, I don't carry a backpack. I don't carry, I, carry, I go really, really light. And um, it, I feel like that helps me to, to photograph people. For one, people just look at, they look at me as a tourist. They don't think I'm, you know, some professional okay. photographer with all these, all this equipment and all this stuff. And Mm -hmm. I think the long having a telephoto or even a longer lens puts people off too. Mm -hmm. Because again, you know, because when you photograph somebody, automatically they're like, "Why do you?" Their first thing is, like, "Why do you want to photograph me?" And if they see that you have all this equipment, then they already start to assume, "Well, you're going to use my photo to make money. You're going to use my photo for this or that." And uh, you know, but when you kind of travel light and you're just kind of look look like you're walking around as a tourist. It, it just breaks all those things away. And then, you know, I don't just walk up and start taking pictures of somebody. I have a conversation and then I talk to them, but, um, yeah. and then they well, might say, Oh, you know, you know, well, with that said, why, well, do you even bother to pull out a smartphone for some of these, these trips or if you, you know, have it, why not? sometimes I carry a GoPro. Okay. So sometimes I have a GoPro in my pocket and, um, when I'm, if I, if I'm, if, for example, if I'm walking around and I'm, and to take portraits of people, you really have to, um, it's like, a, you just really have to be in the mood, you know, cause you're really just kind of engaging and talking with complete strangers and you yeah. have to be mentally like ready to do that, you know? And, um, and sometimes when I'm out walking, I'm just not in that state of mind. So I might carry a GoPro and I might just shoot 
street, like how people would shoot with a Leica or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. But to be honest, probably most of the times, and I, I shoot a lot like that, um, you, I mean, there's a very, very small percentage of those that I ever post. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Just because when I look at it, I, I don't know, there's something about it that's not, it's not my, not my really, not my style things. I'm not controlling the frame. So it's just like, you have to shoot a lot of pictures like that to get one where you're like, oh, this is, this really looks great. The composition looks great. Um, mm-hmm. And that's always been the thing with street photography is those guys that really are good at it. They shoot a, a tremendous amount to get that shot. And right. because a lot of it's just point and shoot, they're not, you know, some of them, I mean, the masters are really great. They know where to hold their camera, but a lot of people will say they're street just because they're taking pictures when people are not really looking at them. But um, a lot of it, it's not, that doesn't really make a great street photograph, you know, for instance. Now with these expeditions, if you will, um, how do you go about just, just planning to go? Do you just wake up one morning and say, "Huh, I want to go to Oaxaca or "Eh, I feel like going across the Atlantic uh, to Portugal. How does this come about? No, I mean, I love to travel. What happened was um, when I was, when I, I, I'm from Ohio. So when I would graduate from college, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Wasn't working in photography. And uh, one of my friends had traveled in Southeast Asia uh, Mm -hmm. at the time. And this was in the late nineties. And he said, you know what, you should travel to Southeast Asia. You could um, spend a year there um, and work, just do photography and work on a whole body of work. And at first I was like, I don't know. And then it just resonated with me. And then I talked my best friend into going, my girlfriend at the time, and we literally Mm -hmm. sold everything that we owned and we left and went to landed in Bangkok with no itinerary (laughs) and stayed for almost a year. And that, and that right there, um, started my love of travel, you know, um, and we went, we went everywhere and I had, I had a Nikon FM two, yeah. so I was shooting film. Um, one, I had two lenses, one 50 millimeter lens and one 28 millimeter mm-hmm. lens. No, that was it. Uh, I figured the wide angle would be if I wanted to shoot a temple or a landscape. And then the 50 is what I carried all the time. So, um, and it was great because, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I didn't shoot with the 50 um, just because it wouldn't look right. Right. So I, that's where I had kind of started to do a, some portraits and um, kind of get into sort of uh, my my kind of style of stuff that I like to take. Oh, man, I, I love the, the, the whole free spirit of it all and just say, you know what, I'm, hmm, I got nothing to lose. Let's just go out here <laughs> right. and, and just start shooting and just making a go of it. I totally respect that. But anyway, what I would like to do is take a look at the the website SF gate and some of the images there, um, that shows off some of your work and just ask you about a couple of those. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, of course. All right. So here, here's the article Uh this San Francisco photographer takes the most vivid portraits of everyday residents. And you know, this, I think I was on my flipboard. I love flipboard, flipboard.com. Um, just for being able to see amazing content throughout, throughout my day where there's tech news or just, you know, beautiful art from photographers around the world. And this one come up and black and white. It just, man, I love black and white photography because you have to, there's no hiding behind color. That's the, I guess that's the best way I can put it when it comes to black and white photography, there's no hiding behind color. You get to see the true story of the image in my opinion. And you, you just, Got some amazing stuff going on here as I scroll down, like this headline image, number one, with the the smoke coming out of his nose, just absolutely beautiful. And again, these are all just portraits of just everyday people, quote, as they said here. Um, And this is using your 50 mil lens on your Nikon body, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when you see someone out and about as you're just sort of walking around and, and, you're off in the distance. You're like, huh, this person looks interesting. And you just sort of walk up. How, how does it, the approach go when it comes to grabbing shots like this one here of this man, it's, he has a mask because that, you know, we're in COVID times, pandemic time, mask is down below his chin on his neck. 
and he's enjoying a cigarette and he's in the, the the contrast in this black and white image where the blacks are like just super dark blacks. Um, and this really making him pop off from the background and it's making that smoke just sort of stand out even more. And it's just, oh, and then a kiss of the highlight on his fingers, just, man, I, I drooled over this image just, <laughs> but <laughs> how do you walk up to, to him and say, Hey, um, what, what's the conversation? What's the icebreaker, if you will? It, you, you know what? It usually just depends on every person. If, um, like, for, for example, like this guy, he was sitting down, having a cigarette, having some food, and he, he, I was walking by, and he said, hey, do you have any money? And I said, oh, I don't, and then that's it. That's, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in. And then I, I, the difference is, though, I, I sit down. I sit down on the street. I sit down next to him, and I just we just start talking. I'm like, oh, no, I don't have any money, but where are you from? And and he's like, oh, I'm from here. And and then you just have a conversation. And then you know, um, I said, hey, do you mind if I photograph you when you're smoking? He said, no, go ahead. And then you know, it's really really a nice. And then he'll say, oh, then he'll get excited. And, oh, let me see the picture, and then I'll show him. And he's like, oh, wow, it's. That's great. And then he said, hey, if you ever, uh, this particular guy was really funny. He said, if you ever sell the photo or make any money, can you donate it to a shelter or to a food bank or something like that? And I said, oh, I said, yeah, dude, that, that would, you know, I'm, and to be honest, that is awesome. I, I, a lot of people, they will ask me like, what do you, they, they want to know like how their photos are going to be used or what are you going to do with them mm -hmm. and, uh, and why? And I say, well, I, if I see somebody in beautiful light, I, I'm just really drawn to that. And I want to photograph them. And I'm like, I haven't made any money in really in the last four years doing street photography because people don't normally buy portraits of people that they don't know, you know, it's weird. So, um, you know, and, and they appreciate that. They're like, okay, right. That, you know, that's cool. I, I see, you know, and then, you know, and some people, if some people I run into quite a few times and, I'll bring them prints if I, if they live in the neighborhood or something. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, it just kind of depends on the situation of where, um, this particular shot, this was with a zoom, but I wanted to kind of capture the emptiness. And, um, this was literally the day after the city went on complete lockdown. And I, mm. I drove down to the area around like, um, seven in the morning, right when the light was coming up. And I just kind of wanted to see what the city was, looking mm. like at that moment in time and uh th this was one of the shots from there that um it i was just kind of like it just kind of blew me away you know um mm. this mm. woman mm. kind of struggling there's nobody on the streets you know it was a really weird time in san francisco and uh it's nice to that, like to be able to look back on this photograph and I can, it, it was just kind of, I always know that like that time when I took this, what the city was going through. Yeah. That, that moment, at least for me, you know, we were, again, I'm, I'm here in Sonoma County, so it's just not quite the same from a yeah. Metro standpoint, if you will. And I remember going out for the first time when it, when all of this stuff happened and the first thing that comes to my mind was that movie Bird Box. You remember that movie? Mm -mm. <laughs> well, I think it was Sandra Bullock and it was a popular Netflix binge at the time. And the people were afraid to go outside and they all had these um, bandanas or wraps over their eyes because they didn't want to see what was happening outside because whatever it was was something sinister. But I'm walking out there and every now and then when I saw a person, I saw a mask. And that was the first time me just sort of understanding that the normalcy of face coverings was about to hit us. Yeah. And it was just so surreal and so eerie. And, and I had my camera in my hand and I didn't even want to take a picture just because it sort of weirded me out a little bit. And yeah. It just burned this weird sensation in my head and I'll never, mm -hmm. I'll never, ever forget that time. And this, yeah. this image right here just sort of reminds me of exactly what I saw, just the emptiness. And then the moment of seeing someone just walking around and they got a mask on. I'm like, oh, crap, this is the new normal now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. For oh, sure. goodness. All right. Let me go back to your images here. Uh, there was a couple more I wanted to pull up. Let's scroll down. Here we go. This one right here. 
I love the fact that you got in nice and tight because not only we have the story of their eyes, but there's the story of the tattoo there. And <laughs> again, you, you just walk up and say, wow, this is this is awesome. Uh, hey, yeah, this cool tattoo on your face. Can I take your photo? I'm sure that's not what you said, right? It did. You know, it's funny. It's just the interaction I have with every person. Again, I, this, I think this person had, was selling something. I can't mm. remember what they had in their hand. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I think they were homeless. And she was like, hey, do you want to, I think it was a pair of shoes that she found. And she's like, do you want to buy it, this pair of shoes for me? And, right. I was, and I said, oh, I said, you know, I said, you know, I just started laughing. Like, no, I, I I already have a pair. I can't remember what. And mm -hmm. then I might have, um, I might have said something about um, what she was wearing or something to have mm -hmm. a conversation. And then we started talking. And then I, then I'm just like, hey, um, you know, do you mind? Could I get a, you know, portrait or could I get a shot? And she's like, oh yeah, you know. Um, usually, awesome. a lot of my interactions are, are kind of like that. Um, if they're just genuine too, like if I see somebody that I want to photograph. Um, it's the eye contact, right? Yeah. And it's like, if they make eye contact when they smile, then I'll immediately go over to them and, and say, Hey, how's it going? You're where are you from? And we'll start a conversation. If yeah. I make eye contact with somebody and they look the other way, there's no, no way they'll let me photograph yep. them. They're just yep. already, I can already tell, but it's the confidence too, that I have that if I make eye contact with somebody look away and then look mm -hmm. at them again, again, they won't let me. So there's a very, mm -hmm. very quick, spontaneous, um, and you have to approach it, um, super fast. Like you, it's just a confidence thing and you have to be willing, like I'll have a conversation with somebody for 10 or 15 minutes and then I'll ask, Hey, you know, um, the light's so great. Can I take your photo? And they'll be like, no, I don't want you to yeah. do that. And I'm like, that's cool. You know? And then you're yeah. just like, well, that, you know, that's cool. Maybe next time. And they're like, yeah. Right. And sometimes that'll happen is I'll see them again on the street at some point and I'll yep. say, Hey, how's it going? And they're like, Hey, and then, then they'll be like, Oh yeah, you can take my photo. So, you know, sometimes it's not always, uh, there's that definitely always a connection. There is what you're saying. There's definitely a you connection. You have to have a connection. Cause I, I want people to feel not posed, comfortable and, um, you know, okay with me taking their picture. And a lot of the people, there's there's quite a few, especially on this, the very first one uh, that comes up on the article, um, his mm -hmm. name was Al, and he's lived in my neighborhood for forever, and he's mm -hmm. homeless. Um, the first time I photographed him, he, I think he might be a little schizophrenic, and mm -hmm. he would not, he just didn't let me photograph him. He didn't want me to take his picture or whatever. And I said, oh, okay. And I kept seeing him. And then eventually he um, kind of started sleeping down the street from where I live. Mm -hmm. um, so me and my kids would um, bring him coffee every morning. Uh, oh. And then I would, and then, and then I might take a picture or two of him, but every, and then, and my kids may made them feel proud and everybody. And then he really opened up and warmed up and, and then he, expected me to take a picture of him every day I saw him, you know? <laughs> and so these pictures of him are yeah. the most intimate, closest. I'm super close to him. Probably. I don't know. This is, this might've been the macro six inches away. At, at, and this is like seven in the morning when he's having his coffee and a cigarette. The first mm -hmm. thing it's freezing mm -hmm. out. And I have a lot of photographs of him like that. And, you know, you, you kind of, have to build that relationship to get that close to somebody to be able to photograph them this this intimate you know right and the, you look the look in his eyes you know he's it's just like he had just probably woke up from a night sleeping on the bench so he didn't sleep he didn't have a bed he, he was um yeah it's but you know it's it and it's you people just always surprise you too like this guy didn't have anything um and uh my, like I said, my kids would bring him coffee, you know, try to bring him coffee every morning and, and we bring him food or whatever. And then, mm -hmm. uh, one day my daughter was bringing him, she, I would pull the car up sometimes and she'd jump out and give him coffee. And he gave her all these bags of candy. And, uh, <laughs> I was just kind of like blown away. And, and, you know, the importance of that, I was trying to explain to her, I'm like, you have to understand this. Like he has nothing. And the little that he has, he went and bought you he some candy for this. 
yeah and i was like that's amazing that's i'm like you know that's yeah so um mm, mm, mm. it's like yeah, the that's... little things you know it's a really good lesson for for my kids not just my kids for just for anybody to learn it's yeah. just like and you know what i noticed is that um more people started actually helping him out and giving him things and so yeah. i think when people see that you're it doesn't take much you see somebody you just ask them hey are you okay or do you want a cup of coffee just a little thing like that can change their whole day you know outstanding such a such a great story sir uh it and just the story of of humanism you yeah know? humanism and, and just sharing some warmth and love I and mean, Lord knows we need more of it <laughs> today yeah, yeah. around the world, not just here in the Bay Area, but around the world. So, yeah, this is, wow, very heartwarming. Mr. Williams, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but this has just been an amazing <laughs> sit down and chat with you. I really do appreciate you walking us through this and, and sharing, you know, just your workflow, if you will, but just your approach to this street photography and, and being able to get such beautiful images and, and, and help us to open our eyes and say, Hey, you know, this is, this can be a very, very intimate touching moment. It's not just about the, the photography. It's also about the warmth and the love. And I really do appreciate you hanging out with me. Is there anything that you'd like to share or, or, or plug that let us know that you're working on or something like that, that you, even if you can um, share it, that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm at, I'm having a show um, May 6th in uh, the Foreign Lens uh, Gallery in North Beach. So okay. it opens um, Friday, uh, May 6th. It's going to be, like I was saying, I like to pivot. And so this is a body of work. It's not for street photography, but I like to always think that all my photography would sit well next to each other whether it's a street photograph or something else i do but these are all abstract um kind of images uh little pieces of like driftwood and things like that that i find on the beach and i bring back to um my studio and i photograph them and so this whole show is going to be about all these little interesting um kind of things that i i find and i have kind of a, a connection to or maybe a thought process at that point when I find them that oh. makes me want to pick that piece up and bring it home and photograph it maybe. And, and the more I look at these little things, it might be something that has happened in a relationship or how I feel about my kids or, and, uh, and the more I'm like, Oh, that makes sense. Why I picked that up. You know, there's certain mm -hmm. little things and some of the times they're all over the place, but they're beautiful They're Um, I have one, sitting i just framed all my work so here's one um that's sitting here that's um this is a piece of driftwood that i i found but at the time um it looks like two twisted bodies together to me you know that are kind of mm -hmm. together so um so i could be... see that hold on hold that up again i could see that yeah oh dude it depends how you look at it you know yeah. you can look at it like two forms but um yeah so it's um oh wow <laughs> the the thing that I, I always try to um, tell people about my work is that first and foremost, I like consider myself an artist and, and photography is just the tool. And yeah. I like to be able to kind of, if I wasn't doing photography, I would be doing something else. And I have in, in certain parts of my life, different types of artwork. But um, so this is, I want to just kind of show the breadth of like my work and stuff with this whole body so it's going to be fun it's going to it's a really I, I just literally i just framed it all this morning <laughs> so uh <laughs> i'm looking at it i'm like okay this all came together the way that i wanted it to so uh, i'm really gotta really love it when that happens it. gotta love yeah, it when yeah. that happens <laughs> well mr harry thank you so much for hanging out with me i really do appreciate your time and um thank you I hope to be able to have you back on the show again in the future just to talk about some yeah. more stuff with your photography. Anytime. Yeah. Excellent. Anytime. Excellent. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, everybody. That was Mr. Harry Williams. And man, again, every time I sit down and talk to photographers, it just fires me up and I start to sweat a little bit. It's never nerves. I promise you that. It's just I get excited and 
yet again, I feel the exact same emotions and really, really grateful for Mr. Harry hanging out with us today and sharing these tips and sharing this, this insight on, you know, what's happening just before he, He's clicking that shutter and after he's clicking the shutter. Such a great story. Hey, if you have any questions, comments, feedback for me, or even for Mr. Harry, shoot me a message. Good old fashioned email. That is to send the email to hop at twit.tv. Again, that's hop at twit.tv for any of your comments and feedback regarding the show. Or if you just like to send over some images with me and do an image critique or just want to share some of your images with the other hands-on photography folks watching the show. Just send them on over there. And if you are cool with them being on the show, feel free to mention in said email that I have your con consent to share those images because I won't share them on the show without your consent. That's just not how I roll. Um, but yeah, feel free to reach out to me and give me a follow over on the social medias. Follow me on Instagram. I am ant underscore Pruitt over there. I have a lot of fun shooting things and Similar to Mr. Harry, I, I'm, I'm a digital content creator. I'm not just a photographer, so I'm going to shoot photos, but I'm also shooting videos, too, and just having a lot of fun with that content over there on Instagram. And again, uh, yeah, just just hit me up if you have any questions, comments, feedback on the socials as well, just as you would with email. And um, before we get out of here, I'd like to say thank you to my man, Mr. Victor, for making me look and sound good each and every week. And I promise y'all, I, I, I know I work pretty hard and I try my best to say thank you to him each and every week. All right, folks, appreciate all of the love and support. Keep sharing out the show. Keep telling everybody about hands on photography. And I look forward to talking to you all very, very soon. But until then, safely create and dominate. And I'll see you next time. Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, editor of Ad Astra Magazine, and each week I'm joined by Tarek Malik, the editor-in-chief over at Space.com, in our new This Week in Space podcast. Every Friday, Tarek and I take a deep dive into the stories that define the new space age. What's NASA up to? When will Americans once again set foot on the moon? And how about those samples from the Perseverance rover? When are those coming home? What the heck has Elon Musk done now? In addition to all the latest and greatest in space exploration, we'll take an occasional look at bits of spaceflight history that you probably never heard of, and all with an eye towards having a good time along the way. Check us out in your favorite podcatcher.